Yes. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q104.3. He is in both the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Coming out April 1st is Before After, a solo retrospective spanning all five of his solo albums. He's on tour with special guest Todd Rundgren. Coming to Carnegie Hall, April 14th. You've probably also seen his television show live from Daryl's house. You probably know his other band, Hall & Oates. All the info, hallandoates.com. Daryl Hall joins us from, where Where are you right now, Daryl? Because I don't I'm, know. I'm in London. Oh, uh, what's happening in London? Uh, well, it's uh, the daffodils are coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Is it work-related, vacation, pleasure, all the above? Well, it's getting away and, and seeing family. I mean, you know, I, I have a house here, so, you know, and, and a family here. Uh, nice. Well, congratulations on this compilation. Uh, two CDs worth, I think, 30 tracks. And, uh, you know, looking at the liner notes, you really worked with uh, quite a diverse group of people over the years of these solo albums, including Robert Fripp of King Crimson, uh, Dave Stewart of the Eurythmics, the late, great T-Bone Walk, of course. Now, with Robert Fripp, first of all, have you seen the videos that he and his wife are doing? Oh, I'm very aware of them. I just talked to Robert <laughs> the other day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have, I've known Robert for many, many years, right? And the world always saw Robert, you know, with this Mr. Stiff, you know, Mr. King Crimson, you know, po-faced, you know, no smiling, just play, played a song. And, he has shown the world his true personality. And I, it's a personality. I, I always knew this about Robert, but uh, he's, he's decided to show the world what, what he's all about. Uh, him and Toya are doing that. And uh, <laughs> wow, that's all I can say. Wow. I mean, lo- I mean, Toya and Robert's Sunday lockdown lunch, they covered Metallica's Enter Sandman. I'm like, okay, I see Robert's playing the guitar. He's playing the Enter Sandman riffs. Yeah. Then all of a sudden his wife is there in a very sort of revealing, I, you know, She's on a Peloton. I don't know what she's doing. And I'm like, <laughs> my, my jaw was on the floor. But, I, you know, 7 million views later, it is, it's just yeah. awesome. But the main I want to ask you is like, how is it that Robert Fripp produced your first solo album? You know, Robert Fripp is like the prog rock god. How did that happen? Well, as you can see, he's unpredictable. And uh, uh, he was always that way. And I, I knew Robert before we made the record. I knew, I've, I've known Robert since like 1975, something like that. And, uh, and we, uh, we, we used to hang out together and, and we said, well, why don't we try doing something? I mean, you know, let's, uh, let's just see what happens when what I do and what you do come together. And that's what, that's what Sacred Songs and the, and the Exposure album were all about. Just uh, two guys uh, taking their different influences and melding them together. Uh, well, the track that's on this compilation, it's almost, I mean, it's not technically an instrumental because I hear your voice. It's only about three minutes long, um, but it's just beautiful and like really spacey and trippy. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. The farther away I am. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it, that's indicative of the whole album. It's just, it's moods. We created moods and, and, and emotions and, oh, it's, you know, I love that album. Um, there is a track also on this compilation where, um, and I, I, I was just, whoa, I was taken aback. Marvin Gaye credited as a co-songwriter and co-lyricist. Stop Loving Me, Stop Loving You is a song. How did that happen? I mean, <clears throat> was this like a remake or was, was there actually a collaboration at one point, like back in no. the day? Or No, no, it wasn't a collaboration. It was after the fact. Uh, uh, I was working with a producer named Mike Peden in uh, a Scottish fella. And, uh, he he came up with the idea. He said, "Why don't you write? A, why don't you take the chorus of this song, and and use it as a jumping off point?" And uh, people were doing that in the, in the '90s. You know, there were uh, some people did it with my song. I, I Simply Red did it with uh, with uh, No Can Do. They they wrote a new song around that. And uh, and I said sure. And I and I took the chorus and then I completely rewrote uh, uh, a, a song around it. And uh, uh, there it was. That's that's what the song is. Stop, stop loving me. Stop loving you. Um, have you had a chance to sort of listen all the way through this compilation and sort of uh, reflect on the times you recorded these albums? And if so, when you do listen, what happens in your mind? Do you go right back and remember the actual session when you recorded the songs? Yeah, I can remember very well every moment that uh, 
that is on those uh, on these songs um uh, in these songs uh, uh i you know i i i i I never listened to my own music. Uh, it, the past is the past, but in this case, I did. Uh, obviously, I did, and uh, I had to put a an order together. And I I chose to not do it chronologically, to do it by mood and 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 flow and and everything, and and to actually make the whole thing as if it were a single album. And uh, I just was. It just reminded me of the amazing times that I had with these these really really talented people and and how and how many good things came out of it i mean that's that's really that's really what i take away from it uh this upcoming solo tour you're bringing special guest and longtime friend todd rundgren with you coming to carnegie hall april 14th along with uh i i think and correct me if i'm wrong the live from daryl's house band uh and tracks of the the live from daryl's house also on this compilation you know what a pleasure to watch that show over the years daryl is there one episode that sort of always comes to mind that really like exceeded your expectations of what it was going to be like to work with a particular artist. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I love the Todd Rundgren one and I love the Kenny Loggins one, but what stands out to you? Well, I mean, there's so many moments. Oh my God. There's so many moments, but I mean, if I had to pick one of the early ones, I, you know, and I was just getting started and, and I, I was looking for people to do this and it, it isn't easy. I lived 90 miles or at the time I was living at that house, 90 miles North of New York city and, uh, you know, out in the country. And, uh, I didn't know if I could get people to come out there and commit to actually spending a day, uh, you know, everybody has their own schedules, they're touring, they're doing this or they're doing that. And I didn't know if I could do it. And I, uh, one of the first people I called was, uh, uh, was Smokey Robinson. And he, surprisingly to me, he said, sure, I'll come up. And he came to the house and I was, and I'm, that was the beginning of it. Cause all I got to <laughs> say is Smokey Robinson came to my house, man. Right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> and it just went from there, you know, and it did talk about a magical show. Whoa. Um, are, are there any plans for that show to continue? And if so, where can we watch it? Well, I, there are, yes, plans for it to continue. I'm not sure yet how and, and what format I'm going to use. Uh, I may do random ones. I may do streaming ones. I, I don't know yet, but I, I have absolutely uh, uh, concrete plans on, uh, on uh, you know, bringing, uh, uh, bringing new episodes out. For sure. Well, we'll look forward to that. Now, I have to ask about your other hobby, uh, home restoration. Um, I, that was fascinating to me because, I mean, talk about work. It's hard to record an album and get everybody together. But, I mean, this is real, like, hard labor work. Are you still doing that? Are you still interested in that? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just fin- <laughs> the, the The house that I was doing uh, on that TV show, I actually have just finished. And it's uh, it, uh, because I stepped away from it for a while. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's doing, uh, I, I love historic renovation. I, I, I love historic architecture and history in general. Uh, but, um, it's, it's, it's not dissimilar to making a record. Uh, you 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 gather these artisans together, these really talented people that are all really good at their craft, all the good at their little thing. And, uh, and you, you bring a team together and you make it happen, you know, and, uh, there has to be a, a head and there's a body just like when you make music and uh instead of uh, fighting with uh, record companies you fight with zoning boards <laughs> yes in the city and absolutely and contractors i guess too daryl hall is with us uh coming out april 1st before after it's a solo retrospective spanning all five of his solo albums and he's on tour with uh, special guest todd rungan coming to carnegie hall uh april 14th um now I have to ask this because I, you know, doing my research, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a frustrated guitar player, like a million other guys around the world. I saw this thing online and I had to ask you, did Eddie Van Halen ask you to be the lead singer of Van Halen? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> actually, yes, <laughs> it was right. At, I, you know, I knew, I knew those guys really well. And uh, we, we actually shared some, uh, some people, uh, uh, crew and things like that. And uh, Eddie came to a show with Valerie. This just goes back, you know, and, yeah. and, and David had just uh, 
just left the band and Eddie, Eddie said, you, you know, you really, you, you want to be the, you want to join Dan Hill and man? You know, I was like, he was half joking, but I think he was serious. I really do believe he was serious. And I, I took it seriously. I went, nah, I think not. I think I got my own shit going on. <laughs> Uh, and speaking of which, the riff in Kiss on my list, the synth part Eddie sort of used for Van Halen's jump. Do I have that right? That is correct. That, that's what he always told me. He said that that inspired jump. Fantastic. Uh, another thing that I saw online, Michael Jackson told you or asked you if it was OK that he borrowed the groove from I can't go for that. Yeah, that was true, too. That happened at the We Are the World session. You know, he came up and he, and he said, uh he, he said, hey, man, I hope you're okay with that. You know, I says, I, I, st I stole No Can Do for Billy Jean. And I said, it doesn't sound like Billy Jean. It doesn't sound like No Can Do to me. I, I, you know, if the, you know, sure, no problem. But uh, he was really nice about it. Uh, Daryl Hall is with us uh, before, after. It's a solo retrospective spanning all five of his solo albums. And it's coming out on April 1st. And uh, Daryl will be at Carnegie Hall with Todd Runger on April 14th. Uh, Sort of one last sort of throwback question. Um, tell us quickly about what you remember touring with David Bowie on his Ziggy Stardust tour and what he was like then. Well, he was hard to get to. Uh, he had some managers and, and bodyguards that were, were taking the thing way too seriously back then. And uh, uh, so that was the, the downside of it. But but uh, uh, the upside was it was fabulous. I mean, when I use that word, I mean, I never use that word. But it it really was. It defines the word fabulous. Uh, he, he, he was electrifying. I had never seen anything like it. I think the world had never seen anything like it. He, he created... He created a sound and a style that uh, you couldn't help but be influenced by and fascinated by, and it was it was really uh, really quite an experience, way out of my wheelhouse to to uh, to open for uh, for an artist like that. And then, uh, of course, Live Aid happened. You guys did that too. You did your set, and then you were also the band for Mick Jagger and Tina Turner. Yeah, sure. And they <laughs> they asked us to do that. <laughs> You're like, nah, I got to wash my car, but yeah, sure. I'll do it. You know? Yeah. No, that, I, I, that, uh, live aid was one of those things that I knew something significant had happened. You know, a lot of times when you're in it, you don't realize it until after the fact, but in that case, I knew that what I was doing was, was significant. And, uh, that's, that's an interesting feeling. Uh, how about Hall notes this year, 2022, will you guys tour or are you going to wait till next year? No, I, we, we don't have any real plans. Uh, I, I'm really concentrating on, on this. This is, this is my post pandemic uh, revelation. And I, I'm going to, I'm going to ride this horse as far as it goes. And we are speaking about coming out before after it's a solo retrospective from Daryl's five solo albums coming out April 1st. And he's doing a tour with uh, special guest Todd Rundgren coming to Carnegie hall, April 14th. Um, the last question is, oh, well, it's not even really a question because I just have to tell you this full disclosure. I do have a platinum album on my wall for the Hall & Oates album, Ooh Yeah, really? because oh. I worked at Arista Records in the early 90s. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yep. I won't hold it. Oh, that's good, man. I, you don't hold it against me. I get it. But I, You I, notice I almost said that. <laughs> it's totally <laughs> fine. <laughs> but I, w I was really psyched to be working for you because I was working with um, Melanie Rogers doing uh, publicity sure. and I and I oh, did yeah. a little little a and R as well. Uh, but uh, I'm proud of that. I, I, I put it up wherever I live. And uh, it's a real good memory for me. So yeah. Daryl Hall, uh, again, uh, everyone go out and get this fantastic. Con I mean, it is really listenable all the way through. Great job on the sequencing. And of course, the songs are amazing. Uh, it's coming out April 1st before after it's a solo retrospective spanning all five Daryl solo albums. And uh, definitely check them out on tour uh, coming to Carnegie Hall April 14th. Uh, Daryl, thank you so much. All right, man. Thank you. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.